Most Muslims know that the Quran affirms the initial inspiration of the Torah and the Gospel, the scriptures of Jews and Christians. They believe this based on passages of the Quran, such as Surah 3, verses 3 to 4. He, Allah, has revealed to you the book with truth, verifying that which is before it, and He revealed the Torah and the Gospel aforetime, a guidance for mankind, and He revealed the criterion. So Allah gave the Torah and the Gospel as a guidance for mankind. But many Muslims are convinced that the Torah and the Gospel were later corrupted, and they assume that the Quran claims that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted. This isn't what the Quran says at all. In fact, the Quran declares that 7th century Jews and Christians were still reading the Torah and the Gospel as the Quran was being revealed. In Surah 7, verse 157, Allah says, Those who follow the Messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written down with them in the Torah and the Gospel, it is they who will prosper. How can we find Muhammad mentioned in the Torah and the Gospel if we don't have the Torah and the Gospel? Is the Quran only saying that there are parts about Muhammad that are reliable, even though other parts have been corrupted? How would we know that the parts about Muhammad weren't among the corrupted parts? What's the point of appealing to a book to validate your prophet if you're simultaneously claiming that the book you're appealing to has been corrupted? Contrary to charges of corruption, the Quran asserts that no one can change Allah's words. Surah 6, verses 114 to 115. Shall I then seek a judge other than Allah? And he it is who has revealed to you the book made plain. And those to whom we have given the book know that it is revealed by your Lord with truth. Therefore you should not be of the disputers. And the word of your Lord has been accomplished truly and justly. There is none who can change his words. And he is the hearing, the knowing. There is none who can change his words. Surah 18, verse 27. And recite what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is none who can alter his words, and you shall not find any refuge besides him. There is none who can alter his words. Who can corrupt Allah's words? Can Jews? No. Can Christians? No. Can the Apostle Paul? No one. At this point, my Muslim friends usually say, well, these verses are only claiming that no one can change the Quran. But these verses don't say that no one can change the Quran. They say that no one can change Allah's words. And as we've seen, the Torah and the Gospel are, according to the Quran, Allah's words. But the Quran goes even further than defending the inspiration and preservation of the Torah and the Gospel. The Quran insists that these texts are still authoritative. In Surah 5, verse 43, some Jews come to Muhammad to settle a dispute. Allah responds, why do they come to you for judgment, O Muhammad, when they have the Torah before them, wherein is the judgment of Allah? Yet they turn back after that, and these are not the believers. According to the Quran, do Jews need the Quran? No, because they have the Torah. According to Muslims today, do Jews need the Quran? Yes, because the Torah has been corrupted. See the difference between what Muslims believe and what the Quran says? What about Christians? Just a few verses after Allah tells Jews that they don't need Muhammad, Allah commands Christians in Surah 5, verse 47, Let the people of the Gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. According to the Quran, should Christians judge by the Gospel? Absolutely, we're rebels against Allah if we don't. According to Muslims today, should Christians judge by the Gospel? Of course not, the Gospel has been corrupted. Again, do you see the difference between what the Quran says and what Muslims believe? If the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted, Jews and Christians have nowhere else to turn. Because in Surah 5, verse 68, Allah tells Muhammad to say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the Torah, the Gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Interestingly, the Torah and the Gospel were authoritative even for Muhammad. When Muhammad was having doubts about his revelations, he was commanded to go to the people of the book for confirmation. Allah tells Muhammad in Surah 10, verse 94, But if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, ask those who read the book before you. Certainly the truth has come to you from your Lord, therefore you should not be of the disputers. So the Torah and the Gospel are authoritative, not only for Jews and Christians, but also for Muhammad himself. Muslims who deny the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Bible are therefore contradicting the Quran.